What's going on guys, Jonathan Shane here, The Keto Road, functional nutritional therapy practitioner specializing in metabolic health and women's hormones. Today, we have another Q&A. We were asked, what is physiological insulin resistance and can we explain what it is? I realized I just said we, I promise I do not have multiple personalities. So what is physiological insulin resistance? So to kind of explain this, I wanna preface up front like why I got into this whole term and why I'm fascinated and really, I want to say expert on it is because it's something I deal with a lot. So physiological insulin resistance is a phenomenon where the body due to internal stress factors creates insulin resistance on its own without external pressures. Okay. So for example, as we know, people in the low carb keto community know that one reason we go to the ketogenic diet is because we have insulin resistance from the standard American diet that we eat. And so when we go keto, we go carnivore, it tends to regulate blood sugar, tends to reset our gut, tends to balance hormones and do all these good things because, not just because you're getting the nutrition from the foods that you're eating, these whole foods that you're eating and you're getting benefits from the ketones and all the great things that come with that, but also simply because it removes those external stressors. The you know highly processed seed oils, the inflammatory refined sugars, hyperpalatable foods and excess calories, et cetera, et cetera. So when that happens, it's good, it's great, everybody loves it, okay? But as we've talked about multiple times in this channel, there are situations in which this can go wrong, okay? So to kind of explain why, we need to understand the relationship between stress, hormones, insulin, and blood sugar, okay? So cortisol, let's talk about cortisol real quick. Cortisol is your stress hormone. Cortisol is not a bad hormone. Let's just get that way. There's no such thing as a bad hormone in your body. Earlier, I was talking to somebody and they talked about how there's no way cholesterol could be bad because your body makes it. Well, guess what? Your body also makes sugar, but we te tend to think that sugar is bad, right? So we have to understand that not everything is bad, it's just the relationship we have with it, both mentally and then physiologically, okay? So cortisol. Cortisol is a stress response. It really helps with what's called your flight or fight response. When your body gets stressed, your cortisol stimulates a hormone in your pancreas called glucagon. Glucagon then gets your body to either curate sugar or stimulates the process of making sure there's sugar in the blood and then releasing insulin, blah, blah, blah. The reason why glucagon is released by cortisol is because it wants your body to make blood sugar. Why? Because sugar, glucose, is a very quick fuel source, meaning your body knows that that quick energy is going to be needed to get out of this stressful environment as quickly as possible. When we're doing a sport, when we're trying to get away from an intruder, when we are trying to run away from something that's hurting us, this is a very, very awesome thing that our body can do. If it couldn't do it, then we would just sit there and get pummeled or whatever was coming our way, right? But because of it, we can get quick bursts of energy and we can get out of the situation. But here is the catch. Your body doesn't know one stressor from the other. It doesn't di differentiate very well, okay? So your body doesn't really understand the difference between a physical stress and an emotional stress. Both release cortisol, both raise blood sugar. Don't believe me? Go do a workout and then go scream at your kids and check your blood sugar and you'll notice both spike it, okay? So your body doesn't differentiate. It has the same response. When this is in short bursts, it's okay. But then we have to ask what happens when cortisol is chronic. When cortisol is chronic, then blood sugar becomes slightly elevated chronically, which means you have elevated insulin. Even if it's slightly above base level, chronically, this exacerbates inflammatory systems, this dysregulates thyroid and sex hormones, and this can over time, a couple years, not weeks or months, a couple years, can create what's known as physiological insulin resistance, where your body, due to chronic cortisol, has created insulin resistance endogenously, meaning it's happening inside. You're not necessarily doing anything from the outside, right? Now, the question then becomes, well, what's causing the chronic cortisol? Could be a couple things. It could be a bad stress uh, work-life balance, could be bad stress management, could be lack of sleep. Good thing is all those things are fixable. But what happens when it's not fixable? It's not changeable. Example, a female cycle. Your luteal phase raises cortisol whether you like it or not. Going through perimenopause, menopause, cortisol happens whether you like it or not. There's nothing you can do about it, you cannot change it, it's just going to happen. And when you don't deal with that cortisol, your body is going to, over time, again, 
not in three, four months, not in six, but a couple years, it can start to become a problem. Case study A, I have a client I've worked with that was carnivore for three years. She had serious SIBO and gut issues. She went carnivore to help with those things and it did help. She felt great, she was lean, blah, blah, blah. About three years into it, she stopped having her cycle. After that, she started to gain weight. She went on to gain 20, 30 plus pounds, eating the same thing that healed her three years ago. Nothing changed, she didn't do dairy, she was strict lion's diet, lots of animal fat, etc. So what was the problem, right? That's where we have to get into these conversations. We talk to a lot of people, I talk to a lot of people that feel great on carnivore and they have a hard time wrapping their minds around that for some people, physiologically speaking, it doesn't really help them deal with the stressors that are going on in their body long term. And here's the problem. When you're eating the things that don't help with suppression of cortisol, it exacerbates symptoms. So carnivore is not creating a physiological insulin resistance in case study A. Keto, if they were doing keto, would not be causing it. But it is indirectly exacerbating it because the nutrition you're eating is not solving the issue. So there's two ways to deal with cortisol like that. You can either do um, removal, which means if there's an external stressor, work-life balance, family, over-exercising, whatever, you can change these. You can manipulate them. You can remove them. And I've seen people do that, right? Maybe they're under eating too long. Maybe they're fasting too much. Maybe they're stressing over work for a long time and they're not doing anything about it because they feel pigeonholed. Um, these things can be changed. They can be addressed and modified. And sometimes when people do that, they feel fine and they can stay on the diet that they've been doing that's made them feel so good. But what, can, what do you do when you can't? Right, let's say you're an endurance athlete. Let's say you get paid to run or you just love the sport. Or let's say that to be able to deal with your stress work, you work out and you just really need to have these workouts. Or let's go to a very permanent one, your cycle, perimenopause transitions, things like that. We can't just remove those. So how do you deal with them? And that's where we have to start looking at the science. Scientifically speaking, the only macronutrient that suppresses cortisol isolated of calories is carbohydrates. There's a reason why when you're stressed, you crave candy. It's not just because you're addicted to the candy per se. Your body knows what it's gonna to do to it physiologically. It's going to, it actually does help it relax, which is part of why you're addicted to it. You, we crave relaxation. So that epinephrine dopamine response, um, you know, um, is going to be exacerbated by foods like that. But really it's not the food. You have to ask yourself what in that food is causing that? And it's candy, it's carbohydrates. So then you have to ask yourself, well, what's the better choice? Whole food carbohydrates. Instead of just going to the thing that's impulsive, go to the thing that's logical and that makes sense, okay? Example, case study A. She could not handle a lot of foods because her gut had gone so long without any diversity that histamine responses were exacerbated. She was just not in a good place. We started with simply a cup of white rice a day, which is about 55 grams of carbohydrates. Within 30 days of doing that, she had her first cycle in three years. It didn't take much. It just, she just needed to suppress her cortisol. Her sex hormones re-regulated. She had her first cycle in almost a thousand days, okay? So understand that physiological insulin resistance is generally a long-term result of chronic low levels of cortisol, insulin, and blood sugar in your body over time that is not being addressed. I know that's a lot of information. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. If you wanna have a more detailed conversation about applications on how to deal with it, or you just wanna talk, you can reach out to me, theketoroad at gmail.com. I hope this gives you an idea of explaining what it is, why it can happen, and some reasons why I believe that getting off of a strict carnivore ketogenic diet and doing a more regimented cyclical carnivore diet or cyclical ketogenic diet or animal-based diet could be better for you if you're experiencing things like this. I'll see you in the next one.